The Ethics of Reversing Extinction. I'm Marcus Mabry for the New York Times. As advances in genetics and cloning make it possible to bring back long extinct species, scientists are beginning to debate the legality and ethics of these efforts. Professor Hank Greeley is an expert in law and genetics at Stanford University, and he joins me now via Skype. Professor, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Uh, this sounds a little bit hard to believe. Uh, are we talking Jurassic Park, reincarnating long gone species? I think we're talking Pleistocene Park, not Jurassic Park. The rate so limiting factor here is being able to get DNA, uh, good sequence DNA from an extinct animal. We've already done that for things as old as about 100,000 years. It seems unlikely we can go back more than 200,000 years. So don't expect T-Rex, but sometime in the next 10 to 50 years, uh, woolly mammoths, giant ground sloths, saber-toothed cats could all be wandering the earth again. Now, what are the pros and cons of bringing back the extinct? Well, let's start with the disadvantages. Uh, one is this process uh, is uncertain, unknown. Um, we know that cloning has its problems when you use it with other animals. So there may be some, some pain and suffering caused to the animals. Another problem is the environmental effects. Uh, we wouldn't want to unleash a new uh, kudzu on the world, because although these animals used to live here, the here they lived in doesn't exist anymore. One of the animals talked about a lot is the passenger pigeon. There used to be three to five billion of them in the eastern U.S. until we basically shot them all. If you put five billion more pigeons in the eastern United States right now, it could be an environmental problem. Well, so there are environmental <laughs> problems. There are uh, safety. Uh, there are animal safety problems. Some people have a concern that it's just not right, it's not natural, they died out for some reason. Um, I think with the passenger pigeons, it's pretty clear what the reason was. It was men with shotguns, and I don't view that as really a, a deep justification for them being gone. Uh, the other, the, the thing that actually troubles me most, though, is that it could have a negative effect on conserving endangered species. The best argument for the Endangered Species Act has been, or at least the most powerful, has been extinction is forever. If it's not forever, and somebody wants to build a golf course on the habitat of the last of some little endangered bird, I can imagine them saying, no problem, we'll pay to freeze them, and then you can bring them back in 50 years. And that, that does worry me, because we certainly need to put first priority on conserving the species we've got. This is just kind of the cherry on the, on the cake. Professor, how close are we in t being able to do this on a kind of sustained basis for different species and have it actually be successful? So success depends in part on, on what you mean by it. To actually bring back one individual of a species, that's actually been done about 10 years ago uh, with a Spanish mountain goat called the Bucardo or the Pyrenean Ibex. Unfortunately, the goat died after less than 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, if we have good samples good frozen samples of cells from an animal, then I think the cloning approach is pretty viable and might happen soon. I think the Bacardo will probably come back soon. There's a wonderful project in Australia <laughs> involving the, the greatly named gastric brooding frog uh, that's close to success. Things where we don't have good cells, and that'll be most of the things we're talking about, you know, the mammoth and the permafrost, those cells aren't well preserved enough to use almost certainly, that's going to be 5, 10, 20 years in the future. So for most of the things, I think we're looking 5 to 20 years in the future just to get a few specimens, to get enough to actually release in the wild and be confident of releasing them in the wild. That's going to be a lot longer. But I, I do think there are some potential benefits. They're both environmental benefits to the ecosystems. Look at what the reintroduction of the wolf has done to the Yellowstone ecosystem, greatly improved it. That was a locally extinct species that was de-extincted in Yellowstone. But I, I have to say, I think the biggest advantage is just that sense of wonder you get, the idea of actually looking at a woolly mammoth and the sense of awe that would give. It's, you can't put dollars and cents on that. But that doesn't mean it's not a serious advantage of this kind of technology. I also think it would bring more money into the whole area of conservation biology, and that would be a good thing. All right, Professor, we'll keep watching you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. That's all for now. I'm Marcus Mabry for The New York Times.